So good evening to everyone. We have a mixed audience here tonight. As you can see, I'm using the, the mobile phone to connect to a group of people in different places in Malaysia, in Penang, in Alaska, and even there's one person from USA also on the group here. So there. As well here in Melaka, where I am, we have a group of maybe 60 or 70 people here this evening. <laughs> Quite a big group here. And they're all here in our temple to hear about Lord Krishna and particularly going to speak about Bhagavad Gita and why we chant Hare Krishna. So Bhagavad Gita is very well known throughout the world. There are many, many editions of the Bhagavad Gita and I came across the Bhagavad Gita when I was a student. I'm from the UK and I studied up in Edinburgh and uh, the, there we had Bhagavad Gita also and we were trying to understand it. But I really didn't understand very much. But later on, not very much later, after I finished my studies at college, a short time later, I was in London and I had the opportunity to purchase one of the books of Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And that led me to go and visit the Radha Krishna temple, which was there in London. And there every evening they would give lectures on the Bhagavad Gita. And so I was attracted to hear the lectures of the Bhagavad Gita. It was very inspiring for me to hear young people speaking on their realization of the philosophy, the knowledge which is there in the Bhagavad Gita. And at the same time we also chanted Hare Krishna. I was introduced to the chanting of the Maha Mantra. Well, actually, I, I, I've been introduced to it maybe before. Before going to the temple, I'd also come across the chanting of Hare Krishna because probably you know that uh, the first devotees came from the USA to London and they made friends with one famous English musician, and with his help, they were able to make a recording of the Hare Krishna mantra. And that recording of the Hare Krishna mantra became very popular on the radio and on television even. And I was also chanting and singing Hare Krishna mantra also from that, from hearing it on the radio and television. And I used to chant, I used to, when I was walking back and forward from college, sometimes I would chant all the way, sing the Hare Krishna mantra to myself. But I had no idea, I didn't know anything about who is Krishna and what is this mantra or anything. I didn't really know anything about it. We actually, the people, my friends, we had a cat. And we called the cat Krishna. <laughs> and another friend had a, had a pony, which she called Govinda. <laughs> so, uh, we were really ignorant about these things. But we were very attracted to the names. That name Krishna and Govinda is very attractive. And Later on, as I said, I finished college and I went to London working and I came to the temple and they used to chant. They used to have the arti every evening, just like many of you came here to our temple in Malacca this evening for arti. So I, I began to visit the temple in London every evening and chant Hare Krishna and we would chant with great ecstasy. We would really, it, we had a very, you know, here in Melaka we have a big temple room here. 
But in uh, London, in those days, we had a very small place. It was quite a small, it was a rented house with about six floors, and the temple was on the ground floor. And we had deities. We had Radha, London, Ishwara, marble deities. And we had also Jagannath, Baladeva, and Subhadra. And we would have kirtan every evening, and we would sing and dance, and it would be ecstatic. It was so wonderful coming out of the, you know, off the streets of London, which is always damp and wet and cold, and then going into the temple and singing and dancing in ecstasy. It was such a joyful experience. So uh, I relish these evenings, going every evening to the temple and chanting there with all the devotees. And of course going to the temple, then the devotees also taught me about chanting on beats and I got beats and I began to chant. And from there, that's how my Krishna conscious life began. So I'm, I'm in the Krishna conscious, I've been doing this now more than 50 years. More than 50 years. It was, I, was, I became a devotee in 1971. And I met Prabhupada there in London in 1971. And I got initiation from him. And Prabhupada encouraged us to chant Hare Krishna and to also read his books. To read his books, actually, when I first became a devotee, we didn't have a proper Bhagavad Gita. We had very few books. The Krishna book had just been printed, volume one. And I had purchased that from a shop. And that was how I started to go to the temple. But there was no big Bhagavad Gita. We hadn't printed that yet. There were no sense of Srimad Bhagavatam, none of these things. Now there's many books, but in the beginning of the movement like that I'm talking, Prabhupada went to America in 1966. So I was I contacted the vote 1970, 71. We had few books, very few. But whatever we had, it made perfect sense. One of what I found was that I've been reading books by many different spiritual teachers, different gurus. You could see I, I was looking for a guru. So there were many different books I read by different teachers, but I, I really didn't like them very much. I didn't find them very clear what they were trying to say. The message was not easily understandable. But when I read Prabhupada's book, everything he said made sense. I thought it was all very clear. The message was very clear. And he was in the books he was always saying, chant Hare Krishna, chant the Maha Mantra. So I began to chant. I used to chant regularly. I would chant, go, go to work, on the way to work I would chant, come home in the evening, go to the temple, I would chant all the way on the, on the train and the subway and so on, chanting. So it, became a way of life for me, chanting. Chanting is very important for our spiritual life. Spiritual life actually begins when we start to chant this Maha Mantra. And certainly I felt an awakening when I began to chant. I began to just understand that life is not meant for just simply only eating and sleeping. But life has a deep meaning. There's a real purpose to life. And we want to make the best use of this life. 
to understand more about our reason for living, why we are here, where we are going. We want to understand these kind of questions. As a young person, I always was asking people these kind of questions. Like, what is life for? What is life about? What's the purpose behind this life? And nobody could give me good answers. I was, nobody, the people would just say, oh, don't worry about it now, later on you'll find out, you know, they say things like that, you know, they just tried to put me off because they didn't know themselves. They didn't have any answers. But when I read Prabhupada's books, when I met the devotees, then everything they were saying, they could, they were answering all my questions. They were very clear and definite and emphatic, teaching me the goal of life and how to achieve, how to go about achieving the goal of life. <laughs> like that, these kind of things, you know. A lot of people, they think about these things, but they don't have any answers, so they think, oh, well, I won't think about it anymore. I'll just forget it. And they just try to run away from these issues. But that's not the solution. We have to understand there are answers to these questions. And the answers are given in the teachings coming from the great teachers. The answers are also given when we chant the Hare Krishna mantra. I found that by chanting Hare Krishna, all my questions would be answered. All of my doubts would be cleared away simply by chanting the holy names, by chanting this magic mantra. I was just reading today you know, generally I would think the word mantra meant to free the mind. But I was reading today another meaning for mantra that it can also mean message. So there's a message also in the mantra. And that message is that we can free ourselves from the bondage of the mind and senses. Actually, we're all caught up in this material world because of our mind and senses, the demands of the mind and the actions of our senses. They cause us to do things which make our life often unpleasant. We're all looking for happiness. Everyone is looking for happiness. Where to find that happiness? So I found that the happiness is actually within all of us. Our happy, happiness is within. If we look within ourselves, we can be happy. Prabhu, can you put that light off? We want to look within and understand more about our own self. We spend a lot of our time just looking at the world around us. And we never look within to actually see our real self. It's important. This is what yoga and meditation is all about. It's about understanding or realizing our self, or we could say self-realization, to come to know who we are. So this is really very, very important part of our life, that if we go through life and never understand who I am and why I'm here, then we've wasted our whole life. Our whole life is just useless. It's very important for us to understand this thing. And by chanting the Maha Mantra, by chanting this Hare Krishna Mantra, then I found all of these kind of questions are answered to me.
the answer, the information is all there. It's all within the words of the mantra. But we have to chant the mantra. The mantra is sometimes compared to a medicine. Just like you get sick, you have to take some medicine. You get the flu, you got some cold or something, you have to take some medicine maybe to get better. And you don't just take medicine once, you have to take it regularly. You take the medicine regularly and in course of time you get healthy again. So Maha Mantra, chanting the Maha Mantra is like that. It is a medicine. It is a medicine and at the same time it's much, much more than a medicine because it's actually the perfection of our whole existence. There's nothing more than chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. There's nothing beyond that. Sometimes people will ask me, what comes after chanting Hare Krishna? And I tell them, there's nothing after chanting. That is, that is in itself the perfection. That is the goal when we are chanting Hare Krishna. We keep chanting. From, by, in the beginning, we begin our spiritual life by chanting and the perfection of our spiritual life is also in chanting also. So this, this is how we understand the, the benefit of chanting Hare Krishna. And chanting Hare Krishna goes along with Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavad Gita which is the divine song. Gita meaning song because Bhagavad Gita is spoken in Sanskrit and Bhagavad, the, the, the song of Bhagavan, Lord Sri Krishna is called Bhagavan. Bhagavan meaning one who has opulences. So Lord Sri Krishna has opulences and by speaking the Bhagavad Gita, he shows us his opulence of knowledge. He's speaking knowledge to reveal the truth to us. He's speaking to us words of wisdom to show us the path to understanding life, to understanding this world and how we, why we are here what we're meant to do in this world. Lord Krishna is speaking the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna at Kurukshetra and it was spoken 5,000 years ago. They say the Kurukshetra war took place 5,000 years ago because 5,000 years ago it was coming to the beginning of the age of Kali. According to the ancient wisdom, there are four yugas, or four ages. Just as there are four seasons in the year, we say spring, summer, autumn, winter. So in the same way, there are four ages. There is Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, and Kali Yuga. These are the Sanskrit terms, right? So, 5,000 years ago, we began what is called the Kali Yuga. Kali Yuga meaning the age of iron. Satya Yuga was like the golden age. People were very religious and moral and pious, everyone. But then, Trita Yuga, people declined quite a bit. And because they declined, the duration of life also declined. 
the ancient scriptures tell us that in the golden age, people lived a life of 100,000 years. In the next age, the Treta Yuga, the Silver Age, the duration of life was reduced to only 10,000 years. And then in the Dwapar Yuga, the, the Copper Age, people lived a life of only 1,000 years. And now we've come to the Kali Yuga, and the maximum life is 100 years, right? when most of us don't see that. It's a long life. So Kali Yuga, we have a, a, a short life compared to other ages. The reason is because we're not very religious. We're not very pious. We're lazy. We're unlucky. We're easily cheated and misguided. And we're always disturbed. We don't have peace of mind. Therefore, in the Kali Yuga, in each age, there's a different process by which people can become perfect. So in the Golden Age, the process was that people would meditate. And they would meditate for a long time. Nowadays, people pretend to meditate. They sit in their homes, or they go to the yoga studio, and they draw the curtains, and they sit nicely, and they say, let's meditate. It's just a joke. It's not real meditation. Actual meditation requires you have to go out from the house, and you have to go to the forest or the mountains or somewhere and you go alone and you have to sit very silently. And people would do this for, they would go and sit for a long time. We, we cannot do that today. How long can we sit? Very difficult. But in the Golden Age, people could do this. So then, it, the next age, because people's qualities declined, so the process was changed. And the next age, people did sacrifice. They would do homas, fire yagnas, offering ghee into the fire and chanting mantras, swaha, Right then, you would put the, throw the rice into the fire and chant the names, mantras. People could do that because they could pronounce the mantras very accurately and it would have, a, have an effect. They could, they could sacrifice an animal and revive it in a young body. The mantras were so powerful, they could take an old goat cut off the neck and it would be reborn as a young goat. They could do harsh sacrifice and other kinds of sacrifice. They would do it to revive the animal just to show the power of the mantra. There are no, we cannot chant the mantras perfectly now, so we cannot do these things. And then in the previous age, Dwapara Yoga, people would do temple worship. We are also trying to do temple worship, but we were, we're not able to do the temple worship in the manner in which it was done in the previous ages. In the previous age, they would do it very elaborately, with great detail and with many mantras, and very carefully, they would make many offerings. So now we come to the present age and we have a short life and we don't have many, we don't have the qualities, we don't have good qualities. 
as they said, we're lazy. <laughs> Vas asked people to chant Hare Krishna mantra 16 rounds. They say, oh, so many. Oh, so much. Ask people to be vegetarian. They say, oh, so difficult. These kind of problems in the Kali Yuga. People are lazy, misguided, unlucky, always disturbed. We see everywhere pharmacy shops open all the time selling medicine. So many sick people. One of the big problems, mind. No peace of mind. They want something for their headache, something for, oh, I'm feeling depressed, oh, I'm feeling angry, oh, I'm feeling, there's so many emotions we are having, and we go to the pharmacy, give me some medicine, give me some drug. Like this, people always disturbed. So, we have the best medicine, free for everyone available all the time, this Hare Krishna Mantra. This is the best medicine to deliver all of us from the, the misery, from the trouble of this material world, simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Mantra. We can find perfect peace and perfect happiness also. Actually, happiness is our real nature. We all want to be happy. We're all looking for happiness. But as I said, we're looking for the happiness outside. We need to look within. The real happiness is within all of us. Not, it's not found over there. It's not, oh, I have to go to Penn. I have to go to KL to be happy, or I have to go to Australia to be happy, I have to go to, you know, the other side of the earth to be happy. No, the happiness is within all of us, and it, wake, it awakens by chanting Hare Krishna Mantra. So, my message to all of you this evening, is I want all of you to chant this Hare Krishna mantra. Take the medicine regularly. There are no rules in chanting the mantra. Many other mantras are there. there they have a lot of rules, different conditions. So you want to chant Gayatri mantra, you have to be a Brahmin. You have to do it certain times. Oh, so many rules you have to follow. But Hare Krishna Mantra, anybody can chant, any time, any place. Hmm? So this is a, a very big bonus that we have. This Hare Krishna Mantra is being given to everyone. Some people may like to chant, for example, the 1000 names of Vishnu. So I was explaining the other evening, 1,000 names of Vishnu is equal to one name of Lord Brahma. Right? This is stated by Lord Shiva himself. Lord Shiva told his wife Parvati, no need to chant. It's actually stated in the Vishnu Sahasrana. It's right there in the Vishnu Sahasrana. Rame Rame Namo Rame Sahasra Nama Vishnu Yam Shri Rama Nama Varanini Lord Shiva is saying to Mother Parvati, don't, you don't need to chant 1000 names of Vishnu, just chant the holy name of Lord Rama. So all the Rambhatas, they all know this sloka. But we should remember also that Three names of Lord Brahma are equal to one name of Lord Krishna. So we prefer to chant the name of Lord Krishna. You get the maximum benefit. Chanting one name of Krishna 
is equal to 3,000 names of Lord Vishnu. And it's equal to three names of Lord Rama. So somebody may say, but well, why are we chanting Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari? Why don't we just chant only Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari? But we have to understand that Rama, Rama can also be a name of Lord Krishna. It's up to you. It can be the name of Lord Balarama. It can be the name of Lord Ramachandra. And it can also be the name of Lord Krishna. Because Rama means also the reservoir of all pleasure. And Lord Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure. So, it is stated in the scriptures also, this mantra is there, that these 16 words, they can cleanse the heart of all the dust. It is so dasha kam nam nam shu. What that? You know that? It's stated in the Thaitriya Upanishad. That these 16 words will cleanse the heart of all the contamination accumulated. Within our heart, there is so many things. There are many things. There's a lot of maybe greed and envy and anger and lust and things. But there's one other thing which is there in our heart also, and that is love. And that love is meant to be given to Krishna, to God. We're meant to develop love for God. That, and that comes about by chanting the Maha Mantra. So we'll stop here now. We'll ask if there are any questions. Well, today I was very happy. I was thinking of you to give your, your pranam. And also there's one man here with the gundan. The gundan you know, and the mother came. Also I was thinking, how to live in time? Very nice, happy Maharaj. Eh? Are there any questions online from our guests and uh, other person? Did everyone hear the question? No? Did you hear? Yes. Did you hear okay? Okay. The finding the balance between material and spiritual life. It's a very practical question. We have to live in the world. We have to maintain our life. So how do we find the balance between the material and spiritual life? Well, we have to understand certain things are important in, in our life. Just like it's important for you to eat. If you don't eat regularly, then you, your health will be affected. And if you don't sleep, just like Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna mentions these two things. He said, you cannot be a yogi if you eat too much or eat too little. Sleep too much or sleep too little these problems come about. So we have to be regulated. In the same way, balance between the material and spiritual life, you have to, and both are important. You have to have some material life, you have to be able to maintain your life, so you have to work. But you don't want to be a, a, just a, a workaholic, just simply only work. Work, work, work and then sleep. And that's not good. 
And you have to have a balance. You have to make some time for spiritual practice. Something is important. And you, spiritual life, spiritual practice is important. It keeps us happy and healthy. It keeps us uh, peaceful. It helps us to control our restless mind, which is easily agitated and anger. The spiritual life is important for us. You have to make some time for it. Not that you have to devote your whole time to spiritual life, but you do have to do, arrange your life in such a way that you have some time in the course of the day. You want some time to chant, just like we chant Maha Mantra. We spend some time to worship Krishna and we spend some time to even read the books or hear. Tonight I'm speaking, you're not reading, but you're hearing. It's as good as reading. Whatever I'm saying, I'm simply telling you what I read, what I've learned from Prabhupada's books and from hearing from Prabhupada. So I'm passing that on to you. So it's as good hearing, it's as good as reading the books. And so we do need to spend some time to do these things because it will help us to control the mind and to be peaceful and happy. So yes, you, need, you do need a balance. Now how much time you spend, that's going to be up to you. Usually most people work in jobs, they have jobs maybe eight hours a day. The eight hour working day is pretty average. Some people may work longer. You may have you have to work ten hours. You may have to do overtime, something. But generally, you know, eight hours, ten hours a day, and then even you get weekends off, or maybe you're getting two days off a month or whatever. But you do have days off, and in those days, then you can focus more on spiritual practice. And in the course of the eight hours working, 24 hours in every day. So you're working eight hours, you do have a balance of 16 hours, you know. All right, you're going to sleep maybe six or eight hours every night. And then still you've got eight hours left. You've got time to do other things. Just like we have to, we have to do laundry, we have to bathe. All right, we do. We think we naturally, of course, we all do these things. We have to take care of our bodies, but we have to take care of our mind. And to help to take care of our mind, you have to do some yoga practice, chanting, Hare Krishna mantra, reading Bhagavad Gita associating with devotees, going to temple, very important for all of us. So, time is very valuable. You don't want to waste it. That's what we learn from Chanakya. India's famous moralist was Chanakya Pandit. And he taught time is more valuable than gold. You can buy gold, but you cannot buy time. So therefore we're very careful to use our time in proper manner. Use it for important things. And if you, if you think about it, our spiritual life is important. It means something to us. Your working life, one day, one day you retire. One day you're going to stop working. Anytime you can lose your job, you can be kicked out. There's no guarantee we can keep our working life going. We need to be, but we do need to take care of our spiritual life. All right, Prabhu, thank you for that question. All right, Kripa Manaji.
Yes, focusing the mind during chanting. Well, you have to understand it's not a question of the mind. You have to concentrate on hearing the mantra. You, you have to hear. We have two ears. Use our ears to hear the mantra. The question is what do you want to do? Do you want to hear the mantra or do you want to listen to your mind? If you listen to your mind, then you won't hear the mantra. We want to understand it's important for us to hear the sound of the mantra. Our meditation, our concentration should go on the sound of the mantra. Don't listen to the mind. Don't be absorbed in your own mind, working, thinking, hearing your mind. Hear the mantra. We're chanting the Maha Mantra, so hear that sound of the mantra. Let it enter into your heart. It should go right to the heart. The holy name comes from the spiritual world. It descends from the spiritual world. And the holy name appears on our tongue. We vibrate the holy name. And we should allow that sound vibration to enter into our heart. And when it enters into the heart, then it will conquer the mind. And our senses will lose their powers. And we will become peaceful and happy. That is the effect of good chanting that we will feel very peaceful and happy and satisfied also. We want to be satisfied. You can get that satisfaction by chanting the Maha Mantra. All right, Chika Maharaji. So maybe we have to stop here now. It's getting very late.